Hi there, thanks for joining me. Today I want to do a just a, hopefully a quick video on um, how to digitize using an SVG from lovessvg.com. This is a site that has a bunch of free SVGs on and you can use SVGs to digitize and you can also use them in your cutting machine if you have one. So um, here's all of the different categories they have. You're going to want to go in to do the same design that I'm going to use today. You're going to want to go into animals and pets and in there is the bull skull with the feathers hanging from it. Okay. I don't want to do that on this video because it'll take forever. So um, just go to loves SVG, go into animals and pets and look for the bull skull or you can just search full skull. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going into sew, sew art. Okay, we're going to open this. Go down here, choose bull skull. I saved mine on the desktop because it was easiest. And this is an SVG. And the reason we're using SVG instead of um, JPEG or a TIF or anything else, um, PNG, is because the SVG, it comes in with all the colors it was designed with. It doesn't come in with more, it doesn't come in with less. It comes in just how you see it. And that's really valuable in SoArt. And if you haven't seen my previous video about using SVGs, um, I'll link it below in the video and you can check that out. But SVGs, like I said, it comes in with the colors that you see. So right here we see four colors and it's actually going to give five colors because of the background. So in the color reduction, you're just going to see five colors. If you brought it in with it, something else, it, like a PNG, you're going to have to do the image wizard, maybe do some posterizing. Um, you'll have to do color reduction for sure because you don't want to have 250 color changes. <laughs> That's insane. So with anything other than SVG, you're going to have to do some um, image processing. But with an SVG, you don't. It is ready for you. So you open it. I only thing I really have to do is double check the size. 3.89 is the biggest for mine. Go over here to the stitch image button. And you can choose the auto sew image or you can do it manually. I've done both ways in my um, testing of this video and normally I do it manually because I want everything to be exactly how I would do it. However, in this instance, the auto sew does it exactly how I want it to do it. <laughs> so I'm gonna choose, if I, if I choose auto sew image, it's gonna give me the option to set transparent color or sew all colors. If I was gonna do like a patch or if I wanted the white in the background to um, sew out, I would have it sew all colors. I'm going to have it just sew out the skull. So I'm gonna have set, trans set transparent color and then I'm gonna choose the white in the background. Now, okay. Now, if you wanted to have the white in the eyes and the nostrils sew out, before you come into here, go to the fill tool and fill in the background with a different color, one of these colors that you're not using already, okay? And then you can choose the set transparent color and it won't take your white. It'll give you your eyes. So, okay, so this is the order that it's gonna do it in. It's gonna start there, which I would too. Go on to the next, over over then it's going to jump over here it doesn't matter if it jumps to the purple that's close to it like that one or that one because at the end you're still going to have to jump from one side to the other to do the purple feather so um same with this you have this guy here and then it's got to jump all the way over here so that's everything let's close menu and you can see it's all stitched out. So from here, we just file and save, and I'm gonna open it in Sew Up Pro to check it out. Okay, and I like to do save as, because I always like the option of being able to save it as an image file, but I'm not going to today. So I'm gonna choose cancel. And if you choose cancel, don't worry. This feels like the wrong thing to do, but 
when you choose cancel, it brings your save embroidery file screen up for you, okay? And if you wanted to make it any bigger or smaller, you can change it here and it's a scalable factor. So it's gonna be like 0.99. And don't hit enter, just look at that and see if that works for you. I am fine with one. So I'm gonna click out of that just for safety. I'm gonna put full skull embroidery file and make sure it says PES because that's what I use. Choose save. It's going to give us a little stitch out over here. Okay. So one thing that I definitely would change would be how it's going to go from the, the teal. It stops at this purple, like right here. It stops down here at this purple and then it jumps all the way over to the feather and then comes back to do that, I would switch those two, which I can do in uh, Sew Up Pro. So let's go there. Okay, now that Sew Up Pro is opened, file, open, and we're gonna find the one that we Digitize. Okay, it's going to show us all of our jumps. And if your version doesn't show you all these jumps, just go up here to view and click on jumps. Okay, because I usually don't have the jumps, but it's important for this for you to see, like the re well, not for you to see because you guys aren't dummies, but for you to see why. Oh, it's not going to let me do that. Oh, because it's all one color. Okay, so if I would have wanted these two switched, I would have needed to do that manually in so art while I still had it open. But that's okay. Not the end of the world. It still looks really nice. Okay. All right, so you can play with um, the density and all kinds of different stuff. You can change things. You can put a border around it. So what pro is amazing. So I just wanted to see how it's going to stitch out, make sure that there were no gaps or anything, you know, really apparent. And because this is all pretty dense design, I would suggest using um, a stronger, uh, what do you call it? A stabilizer on a design like this. On designs like applique, that whether it's going to roll a little bit, like if this, this, skull part right here was applique you wouldn't need such a heavy um, stabilizer because it's going to it's it it's not going to need as much of the fabric that you're embroidering on I hope that that makes sense whenever you're embroidering a dense design like this it's grabbing the fabric underneath it all the time and pulling it from side to side to side and sometimes that's why you get gaps like these gaps are part of the design but say they weren't and you have these gaps that sew out, not, I mean, if you get them in the design, then that's the problem with the program. But if you get it at stitch out, it generally just means that you need a little bit thicker of stabilizer. Okay, I hope that that was helpful. I know that that was a little bit more info than I really meant to go into. And um, I am working on getting my sewing area back together and I'll start doing stitch outs again, but I hope that this will pacify you guys for now. And I hope that you guys find some really awesome designs on love loves svg.com. I just found them this morning and I absolutely love the site. So um, I hope that you guys do too. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>